Makai Sanat uh, has responded to the Kamala Harris team coming out and saying that they never reached out to him. So y'all remember he did that whole live where he was like, they wanted me to talk about politics, blah, blah, blah. And then Kamala's team had to come out and say, no, we never reached out to him. Mm-hmm. Kai Sanat got back on the stream and addressed that whole situation. So that Better was- not be lying to us. Kamala Harris' campaign did not draft Kai Sanat. Chat, I want you to know something deeply, okay? First of all, let me let me let me t- let me tell you something real quick, and this is why I don't touch on the topic of politics. Chat, word to my mother, watch the clip back. I didn't even say no names, and on top of that, word to my mother, I would never lie about anything. Just know that. Just know that. Just know that. One, I didn't say no names, and two, word to my mother, I would never lie on anything. That is whack. Well, Kai didn't lie. He didn't. But see, here's the thing. Because you said it this morning. You were like, well, somebody had been said to me that he didn't mention no names. And then I went back and watched it three times at three different locations because I wanted to make sure I was watching the full. Mm-hmm. He didn't say a name when he was he about said Secret to, Service. Yeah, when he was about to say a name because he was talking about how the girl said, we need you for the campaign. He said, what campaign? He said, uh-uh, uh, we're not going to get into details. Like, he didn't want to say a right. candidate. But he said Secret Service, which makes you feel like... Which made people feel like it was Kamala Harris because he said Secret Service. But, but Donald Trump has Secret, Secret Service as well. Right. Yeah. Well, he also didn't lie because he did get reached out to, just not by Kamala's team. He got reached out to by a third party organization with informal ties to the convention team. Kamala's team said that themselves. So Kamala's team, uh, they they didn't have somebody reach out to him, but somebody definitely did reach out to him. It was just like I said, a third party organization with informal ties to the convention. So it wasn't Secret Service. But he's saying the it, it wasn't Kamala's team. I feel like the way he's saying it in the second clip is almost like like that definitely happened. We know that, right? Mm-hmm. But I feel like he's saying that there was someone who reached out to him for a candidate to sit down with him, but he didn't tell us who it was, so he didn't technically lie about Kamala because he never said it was Kamala. Well, there's a lot of third party organizations who are doing things like that though. Like they'll they'll reach out to people, they'll send text messages, or they'll call, or they'll ask you, do you want to be a part? Can you can we can we count on you for help with this campaign? Mm-hmm. You saw Dr. Umar post something the other day saying Kamala's <laughs> team reached out to him. That wasn't true either. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was but, say, but, what? But, but I mean, but he did get reached out to is what I'm saying. It's mm-hmm. just not Kamala's team. It's right. these third party organizations that are doing this on their own. Well, speaking of a third party, there's another party in the situation that would love to sit down and have a conversation with Kamala. Mm-hmm. Meek Mill. Mm. So Meek tweeted yesterday, I want to ask Kamala Harris questions about her past as a DA. Even if she had to be tough, all I hear is rumors of her. I would ask her three questions about black and brown men going to prison in her views and try to help her understand from a survival standpoint she may have never had to encounter. So he is a, he's trying to get more information from Kamala about the rumors and the conversations that people are having about did she put black and brown men in jail because of drug convictions and different things. Listen, I have no problem with that. Y'all can laugh at Meek Mill all y'all want, but Meek Mill is uh, assisted in getting legis- has assisted in actually getting legislation passed. Meek has championed certain mm-hmm. legislation that has actually got passed in Pennsylvania. The probation reform bill, like, that was Meek, along with Governor Josh yep. Shapiro and, and Michael Rubin and others. Like, like, so I have no Hove. problem with that. Yep. Let me ask you a question. This has been something that people have been asking about for the last, I mean, when she was running. Didn't she answer these questions already? Because I thought that these were things that she addressed when she was running for president. I've never, I don't know. Yeah. There's plenty of interviews. Where she addressed that, right? Yeah. You, See, but I feel like that got lost in the shuffle of the time where, like, we weren't really listening to Because y'all Negroes care about mess, and that's it. No, it just yeah, was. She's addressed I mean, it many yeah, times. Yep, you're right. We do. She's done two we interviews do. here on Breakfast Club that you can go reference. And I, I think she dressed it up there. 95% there, yeah. of all of those things were covered. We do care about mess because at that time, I felt like we were only focused on, like, all the her, drama her press, around Biden. And, her silk press. Oh, the silk press be press, baby. See what I'm saying? What? <laughs> Whoever do her hair is up. The press babes, the press girls, city girls is up a thousand points. That press be laid, never a stiff. She don't even lay, have to lay her edges. It just flows. Okay, we're going to move on. Mm-hmm. Tyler, the creator, you know that press be pressed. That ain't the sit in the kitchen press. Okay, Lauren, you okay. see what I mean? Because it's just so, one little thing out there, and we get distracted so easy. Because you don't understand. And, and it's Silk press. The whole summer. Go. Y'all know how hot it was this see? summer? It's global warming. <laughs> it's 7 p.m. Friday. It's 95 degrees, and her hair is still flowing like that. That's crazy. Yeah, we, we just, just had a conversation about two minutes about her press. Ju- we were just Sorry. talking about probation <laughs> reform, <laughs> her <laughs> record as a prosecutor. All I had to do was say, Silk press. Lauren went off. It's a whole other direction. Two minutes. 
My bad, y'all. Okay, one more thing. Okay, say it. I'm not the minority in that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Tyler, the creator, uh, sat down with uh, Maverick Carter for a Maverick show, and they had a, a, a long conversation about a lot of different things. Um, but one of the things that's picking up is the fact that uh, Tyler, the cre creator, felt like he needed to apologize to Eminem. I've seen this show called, I think, Painkillers on Netflix, and it's about, like, how people got addicted to opioids in, like, the 90s or whatever. And Eminem put out uh, this album called Recovery. It's two, 2010. I was a big Eminem fan. And when that album came out, I f hated it. Publicly, it was like, this shit is whack. Didn't like it. And after watching that show, dude, I felt so bad because unlike me publicly saying that stuff and him getting off drugs and being clean and getting to a point in his life that that's behind him and me implying, like, you need to know this shit is whack. He probably felt like I was attacking him. I thought I was just like, I don't like the music. He was in a different part of his life and probably felt like I was attacking him. Mm. And now I feel so bad about saying that stuff because my perspective was so limited. I love when people are loud it. about mm -hmm. being wrong. I respect it. Yeah. And I think that that's important too because a lot of times with artists, people give them hell when they get into a different place in their life. It's like, oh, they don't make the same music. They can't rap no more. They can't right. this. And it's just like, no, they people grow Evolve. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And being able to be vulnerable is a thing now. But back then when Eminem <clears throat> was doing it, it wasn't too many artists that was coming out talking about the addictions and the different things that were happening. So that's good to hear. But I mean, that is the worst. Nothing worse than letting a joke fly or a well-timed insult. And then you find out they're going through something traumatic. Um, so I, I respect him, you know, owning that. But if it's still art, art, right? If, yeah, you, if you don't you like criticize. the art, you could still criticize the art. Yeah, and I think to his point, I, I, cause he did. Yeah, I just think it was more so about like he was he didn't like the subject matter. He wanted mm -hmm. the O M or, mm -hmm. or whatever. So, um, but he also talked a lot about. Uh, we don't we not got time for this. We'll be wrapping up. Go ahead, finish your thought. We talked a lot. He talked a lot about the industry itself changing from 2016 when he first came out to now and how like the internet and people feeling like they know celebrities makes it hard because people just like run up on you and things mm -hmm. of that nature and then when you don't like it you get labeled as like the crazy person and then he also talked about how horrible it is that the media picks up and supports artists who literally say I don't even care about rap I just do this for the money or I'm viral because mm -hmm. of TikTok because it makes real musicians like him and other artists look like the eyeballs out or people who want to become artists they don't aspire to really do real music. Like, they just get out there and just throw a song on TikTok that goes viral. Like, he said that that's what's messing up the game right now. Well, drop on the clues, Bonzo Tyler, the creator. He's 33 years old. Welcome to old headism, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Everything is going to get on your nerves. Mm -hmm. Everything that's about 10, 15 years younger is going to piss you off. It is what it is, Tyler. Okay? All, All right. these new little jitterbugs in their early 20s, 21, 22, they don't do things like you used to. But remember, 10 years ago, Tyler was in that same boat. Yo, that's <laughs> there, what was crazy. Yeah, there were people say criticizing that. him the same way he's criticizing folks now. It's okay, Tyler. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Yeah, but, but, but I think with Tyler, too, I think his his problem is he really gets busy. He can really rap. He, yes. So it's he's like, dope. you know, he, he plays a lot of them, them stupid games and he jokes a lot, but he really can rap. Yeah, you for know, sure. At the end of the he's day. a musician. He is. All right. Well, that is Just With The Mess with Lauren LaRosa. Now, Charlamagne, who are you giving that donkey to? There's a judge in Detroit. His name is Judge Kenneth King. He needs to come to the front of the congregation. I would really like to have a word with him. All right. He and pissed then, me off. And then after, we'll open up the phone lines and discuss. 800-585-1051 is The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.